What is up, Fit Fam? This is Kate from Garage Gym Reviews. This is Caroline. And I'm Nicole. And we are here to talk to you today about the best resistance bands on the market. And we're gonna tell you today about which ones we think you should buy. What are we gonna look at today? We're gonna look at a bunch of different resistance bands. So we have loop bands, we have pull-up assist bands, we have mobility bands, we have innovative bands, and I'll tell you if they smell like a tire factory. Nicole, what are you gonna teach us? And I'm gonna tell you about the top five mistakes I see with resistance bands as a certified personal trainer and what you can do to address them. All that and more in our video today. I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret. My all-time favorite resistance band is crossover symmetry. But I don't have a lot of money. If you're like me, you're on a budget, and so you're looking for budget-friendly items. This is like my crossover symmetry knockoff. It's a brand that's on Amazon. I think you say it Renault J. It could be Renault. I don't know. I stumbled across it. I ordered it and I have used it almost every day since. Not just for me, but I also have a little old lady named Edie. She's in her 70s. She's fantastic. And I use these with her as well for her resistance training. So right off the bat, budget friendly as all get out because they're under $30. You get five bands of varying resistance. You get two handles. You get a door jam, like a holder that you can put in the door so you can mount the bands up. You also get ankle straps, but um, they're horrible and they just come loose. I don't recommend using them. And in fact, I threw mine away because I just don't use them. But I do use the handles, I do use the bands, and I do use the door jam all the time. Five different bands ranging from 10 to 30 pounds. You can also double them up to get more resistance. So you just use the carabiners. I've had as many of, as three on here at one time. Well, I use these primarily for my warm up and like some shoulder prehab rehab type work. Edie, my client, uses them a lot for all of her resistance training. We do all kinds of exercises with these. Their construction is about what you'd expect, right? They look a little bit like the Rogue Tube bands. They don't look like crossover symmetry, right? Because they don't have that fabric over them. So this rubber is going to rub up against your skin. FYI, if you've got a latex allergy, this is not the way to go. But they've lasted me a good six months already. All resistance bands have a shelf life. They're all gonna snap probably on you while you're using it. Um, hopefully not, hopefully you inspect your bands ahead of time. These though, like I said, they've lasted me six months using them at least two to three times a week. And I really do like them. And obviously these aren't as durable as say something like a Rogue Tube band where you can, you can tell that they use thicker latex rubber on it. One other thing that I love about these, especially if you're new to resistance band training, I love that the brand puts the weight right directly on the bands for you so you know exactly what the resistance is that you're using. It's ballpark, it's a resistance band. We know that the resistance profile changes throughout the band, but it gives you a good idea, especially if you're making progressions on movements like Edie. Edie started with shoulder presses with the red band and now she's up to a red and a green. All right, guys, so the best overall pull-up resistance bands are hands down, to me at least, the Rogue Monster Bands. So these are really thick. As you can see, this is probably one of the thickest resistance bands you will ever see. I absolutely love these bands. They're great for pull-up assistance. You can use them with barbells. Um, they're definitely multi-use. Now, these are kind of expensive, as you would expect from Rogue. There's two different pull-up assist um, options you can choose between. So you'll get a set of three and a set of three. The set of three is $80, so that's definitely worth keeping in mind. Now, the thing I dislike easily the most on these is how bad they smell. These smell like a used tire factory so badly, your hands will smell like this the rest of the day. That is easily the worst part of this, and it's, in my opinion, besides not putting the poundage on each of these, the only drawback of these. They also have like a powdery residue, so, I mean, not my favorite, but 
free chalk for your lift, I don't know. So with these, like a lot of fitness equipment, you get what you pay for. So yeah, they are more expensive, but you'll also have a longer shelf life than say the Amazon Basics loop bands. And I think that's worth keeping in mind. So these are the best resistance bands that are latex free. So say you have a latex allergy and most resistance bands really won't work for you. At least French Sport thought of you. So you can buy a set of six for a extremely pricey sum of just under $200. Even a really skinny one of these fringe sport latex free bands, you're paying for the fact that they are synthetic rubber. You're paying more money. So this tiny little band right here, $27. And I think that's really worth noting that these are gonna be a lot more expensive than even the Rogue Monster bands. But if you have a latex allergy and you haven't previously been able to use resistance bands, these might be a great option for you. They do pass the Caroline sniff test. They do not smell like a tire factory, but they are extremely powdery. So again, worth noting, they look almost dusty, but they're not. So I'm gonna show you the most innovative resistance bands. And you might be thinking, these are the most innovative resistance bands, Caroline? Well, this is actually the most innovative resistance band. This is the Gorilla Bow, actually. These are just the little resistance bands you attach to the side. You can attach up to 300 pounds of resistance. A few different size bands come with the Gorilla Bow. You get a 10, 20, 30, and they skip 40, and you get a 50. So you can also buy additional bands on the website separately if you prefer. But generally speaking, a 50, a 30, a 20, and a 10 are probably good enough for you if you're doubling up on all of these. Probably one of the biggest cons of this, besides how obnoxiously large it is, um, is the price, which is $200. $200 is a lot of money, especially for a resistance band set but there really isn't anything else like it on the market. And there's actually also multiple versions of the Gorilla Bow you can buy. You can buy the original, which is this. You can buy the travel version, which actually breaks down into multiple pieces. And that might be a great option for you if you're tight on space and want to store it in your closet or under your bed and not in use. So next up, we're gonna talk about the best resistance bands with handles. These are the Rogue tube bands. And like everything from Rogue, these are overbuilt and super durable, but also kind of expensive. So for these six bands, 75 bucks. Not cheap, but these are gonna last you for a while, especially if you take care of them. So you'll get six bands here. It ranges from very light to light to medium to heavy to very heavy to super heavy. There are no poundages listed, which is kind of a negative in my opinion. They do say that that very heavy or super heavy band is 60 pounds of resistance, but everything else is kind of a mystery. Not the best thing, but look at these handles. The grip on these is so sexy and so great. Normally resistance bands don't have handles like this. These are so great if you have sweaty hands, perfect amount of grip, love that. So one negative thing about these bands, they do squeak a little bit. Um, some squeaking with these is normal, just how the collar meets the uh, rubber here. These do squeak a little more than normal, I'll have to say. If you're an auditory person and that kind of stuff bothers you, you may wanna pass on these. I've gotten used to it, um, not a huge deal, but something to know. So next up we have the best mini bands. These are the Titan Fitness Loop Bands, and these are awesome. They're a little stiff now because these are brand new, but in a package you get four resistance levels. Red is light, 15 to 30 pounds. Black is the medium, 40 to 70 pounds. Purple is the next level, 60 to 100 pounds. And then you got the big boy, 70 to 120 pounds. These things are strong and stiff. Mini bands are great for glute and hip exercises. They're a little more limited in terms of their use um, than something like a monster band or a band with a handle. But if you really wanna do a lot of warm up work, prehab, rehab stuff on your glutes or your hips, these are awesome. A great thing about these bands is that they have a one year warranty and that is pretty uncommon when it comes to resistance bands. So you can use them and abuse them for a year and have no worries that you'll be able to replace it if something does happen. So you get these eight bands for 45 bucks, which is a great price. And with a company like Titan, you get free shipping. So $45 flat, they're all yours. Another thing I really like about these bands is that they don't roll over. So a lot of times with mini bands, they're pretty thin and flimsy. And when you put these over your knees, if you do any kind of movement with your legs, they tend to roll over on each other. These do not do that, which is a great perk um, and something to definitely keep in mind if you're looking for a mini band. Those are our 
our top picks. Next, I'm gonna run you through the top five mistakes that I've seen as a personal trainer using resistance bands. I use resistance bands a lot with my clients, especially pre and postnatal clients, as well as beginners. They're really user-friendly and they're safe, sometimes safer than free weights because there's more controlled range of motion. So number one mistake, picking a band that's too light or too heavy. You wanna be able to complete the exercise with a full range of motion. So my wonderful model, Kate here, is gonna show what happens when a band is too heavy. You cannot complete a bicep curl the right way if your band is too heavy. Conversely, if the band is too light, you're not gonna get the full benefit of the exercise because you're gonna fly through it like it's air. You wanna pick that Goldilocks resistance band. That's the perfect amount of resistance for you that's gonna challenge you, allow you to um, implement progressive overload and still get the whole benefit of the exercise. So mistake number two is not practicing proper form. This is true of barbell exercises, dumbbell exercises, but with resistance bands, what's different is that the uh, resistance is variable. When you're lifting a dumbbell, it's the same constant load, up and down, up and down. With a resistance band, the resistance gets higher as you move up to the top of the movement. So when Kate's arms are fully flexed, it's harder than when it is at the top. So you really have to control the movement up and down, up and down, nice and slow. You don't want anything too fast. You don't want your spine out of alignment, your core. You really wanna make sure, specifically with resistance bands, that you're really focusing on your form. So the next mistake is not setting up your bands correctly. So if you have a band with an anchor, definitely use that. It's the safest option, especially if you're gonna be doing things like rows or anything where you're pulling away from the stable object that's holding your band. Another option if you're using a monster band is to loop it. So you wanna do this the correct way, looping through here. You would never do this on an object that's not stable. This is for demonstration purposes only, but making sure that this is nice and tight here before you begin. This leads me to my next point, which is don't use an object like a chair or a table or anything potentially that would move when you're, using, when you're using these bands. So you're thinking anchor on the wall or a super heavy piece of furniture, um, something on the door that you could attach it to. Anything that you can ensure that your mount is as stable as possible is really what you wanna look for. So the fourth mistake is safety related. Do not, under any circumstances, release the band when it's under tension. This can really cause injury to yourself, to people around you, to things in your vicinity. Um, it can also snap the band. So really make sure that you're using that controlled motion to release it before you let go of the handles. All right, and my last tip is to make sure that you're taking care of your bands. These are not gonna last forever. It's not like a dumbbell or a barbell, but you should be able to get definitely a few years out of them if you follow these two tips. Do not store them in direct sunlight or in a really hot environment. These can both contribute to breaking down of the elastic and the rubber, um, which can potentially cause them to, to tear or get brittle. So keep them out, store in a dry place until you're using them. And also make sure that every time you use them, you check them for any wear and tear, because you really don't want a band to snap when you're using it. Just do a quick once over, make sure that there's nothing that looks suspicious. If there is, don't use it. Remember, if you take care of your equipment, it will take care of you. So keep that in mind when you're using your bands. All right, there you have it. We told you the best resistance bands on the market. And what to avoid when you're using them. And now you're gonna tell us, what are your favorites? What did we leave off the list? What would you like to see next time? Sound off in the comments. You wanna see more videos like this? Hit that subscribe button and we will see you next time. Mm -hmm.